Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, where I coach owners of cleaning companies every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on anything and everything related to building and growing cleaning companies. If that's you and you're committed to growing your cleaning company, check out growmycleaningcompany.com where you will find everything you need to create the cleaning company you've always wanted. If you want to be a guest on the show, you can reach out to our producer Natalie at nat, N-A-T, at growmycleaningcompany.com or give us a call because we love hearing from Cleaning Nation. The number is 480-648-5149. Today, we have a Grow My Cleaning Company first in that we are talking with uh, two people, owners of Washington Cleaning Services, Randell and Germez. Uh, Washington Cleaning has provided residential and commercial cleaning and floor services in Augusta, Georgia for the last three years. If you want to reach out to Randell, uh, you can get a hold of uh, Randell or Germez. You can get a hold of them at Washington Cleaning SVCS, like Washington Cleaning, but then the services is uh, abbreviated Washington Cleaning SBCS dot com. Gentlemen, welcome to Cleaning Nation. Hey, how you doing, Mike? This is Randell. We're super excited to be a part of the show. Glad hey, to have you, Randell. Jermez, are you with us? Yes. <laughs> so I think Randell might be the chatty one, but we're glad to have you both, my friend. Um, before we jump into all the boring cleaning talk, tell me, how did you guys get into business? How did you get into business together? How did you find Cleaning Nation? Give us a little bit of a background and a story on, on you on you folks. Well, Mike, um, I like, was my nephew, and, um, and basically I, I've been doing cleaning for around eight years with my father-in-law, and um, he decided he wanted to retire, and um, me and Jaleel got together and decided that this is something that we wanted to do together as a family. And, you know, try to uplift that family business. Okay, cool. So it sounds like your your family had it, and then did your dad just step back and give you the business, or how did that transition work? Well, it was my father-in-law had it. Okay. And, um, he decided to retire, and well, me and Jeanette decided to start our own. Okay, awesome. So, I've, honestly, it's funny. I've had uh, – we I've obviously had a lot of married people, not both at the same time, but people that work with their spouses – which, and I do that, and it comes with a, a unique set of challenges. How is it, you got to be honest here, be square with Clean Nation. Is it, what kind of, I'm sure part of it's fun because you get to work with family, you trust each other, but it's got to be stressful time. How is it working with family? I mean, it's great because, I mean, we know each other. You know, he's my nephew, but we're more like brothers. So we know each other very well, and we also know each other's work ethic. Man, that's awesome. Congratulations, because that uh, partner's, they could be awesome, but man, could they be tough? And when it's family, it's it's you got to be real careful, right? Because if stuff goes wrong, it's not just wrong at work. It's at Christmas dinner yeah, right. and Thanksgiving, all that fun stuff that comes with it. Yeah, right. All right, cool. Do you guys have family? Sounds like you're in Atlanta. Is that you guys born and raised? Tell me a little about yourselves, and then we'll jump into the coaching piece. Hey, I'm Jamez. Um, actually, I was working full time at the railroad. On, on weekends and doing cleaning business for the weekday. So, uh, uh, business at the railroad, it got kind of bad and they wanted to lay off and stuff. So, I decided to put my faith in my own hands and go out there and run my cleaning business full time. Love it. Love it. Love it. That is so cool. So many people nowadays just kind of give the whole, well, you know, my job went bad. So now I'm broke as opposed to my job went bad. So I had to do something different. Good for you, man. I love hearing those kinds of stories. So, uh, you guys have been at it three years. Is it just the two of you? Do you have em- uh, Do you have any employees? What's the company look like today? Uh, right now, we have three part time employees. Um, right now, you know, traction is doing good, but not good enough like we you know, like it to be. Okay. So we have a lot of more improvements to make. Uh, you know, a lot more learning. You know, business wise. You know. Okay. Well, let's see if we can't help you with that today. Um, what one thing are you struggling with or what one thing would you like some coaching or help with today? Uh, marketing. Then I presence be not on the internet. 
Okay. And trying to see which is the, the do's and don'ts of marketing on the internet. Okay, cool. Let's talk specifically about the internet just because um, we've done a lot of shows on client attraction and marketing. And it's just such a big topic in the time that we have. We can't, you know, I want to make sure I give you a, a real in-depth answer uh, on a specific topic as opposed to a lot of general stuff that you can't use on something big. All right, so let's talk about online right. client attraction and just what you should and shouldn't do and what you need to do and what's optional and all that good stuff. So first of all, it used to be, because I'm 100 years old, um, that there was, you know, there'd be like, oh, I've got, uh, you know, I've got a website, right? So I'm good to go. And that's, you know, in the back of the day, they cost a bunch of money. So now websites are basically table stakes. I'll see uh, business right. owners that don't even have a website. They're like, oh, I have a Facebook page or it's a Wix page. It's not, you know, it's obviously, you know, kind of a hanky kind of a deal. You don't need to spend thousands right. and thousands of dollars on a website, but you do need to have a good website presence. Um, John Ayers is a buddy of mine. I've had him on the show. He's kind of the resident expert on websites. If you guys aren't happy, not just you guys, but Clean Nation, if you're not happy with the website that you've got, um, or you just want him to kind of walk through with you specifically on the website, um, check out that podcast. It's free. And I think he offers a consultation as well. So the first thing is you've got to have a website and it's got to be clean and nice and not look like it's from 1997. Um, that's like, you know, it used to be, if you didn't have a business card or a, a business address, you were not for real. Now a website is for sure that. So again, that's not to say you get to spend 20,000 bucks on this monster website. Um, but you do have to have a clean, uh, website that looks like it's done today. And it, you know, don't, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of those like Wix.com or something where you can do quote unquote a free website or these hanky, you know, spend a little bit of money and get something decent. That's the first piece. The second piece is. That's just really the foundation. Nowadays, people aren't just looking at your website. They're going to look at your whole online presence. So it's going to be a combination of social media. Do you have a, a LinkedIn, a Twitter, a Facebook, uh, a combination of that plus your website plus reviews, right? That's like a whole nother uh, kind of category of things are going to look like. And again, on the reviews, I did a, a one of the podcasts. I had the gentleman from So Tell Us on which is an amazing review software and he gives a free uh, a free uh what's it called a free trial on that thing so if you if you don't have good reviews or you don't have any reviews um, absolutely check out the sotellus website or the sotellus podcast and I'm, and I'm referring to a lot of podcasts because it's such a big topic i kind of want to i want to make sure that i give you guys the resources to 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 check out the things that we can't get deep into today so the first piece is you need a website. The second piece is you need to understand what your entire online presence is. And that entire online presence is what you say about yourself, which is your website and to a degree your social media. And then what others say about each other, which, about you, which is the social media, right? People can tweet and, and have opinions on Facebook about you that you may or may not like. And of course, reviews, and you can take control of that process with so tell us. Or you can kind of be at the mercy of the Yelps and Angie's lists of the world, which can be good, but those guys can bite you in the butt as well. So that's the big thing is, first of all, you need to understand the website is table stakes and that you have to have it, but that's not the whole picture. And the, the problem and opportunity, depending how you look at it, is people are, I don't know what the percentages are, but it's obscenely high, probably well over 50%, are going to quote unquote check you out online before they call. Right. So every, you know, at least half of your calls are going to be preceded by them knowing this guy has a LinkedIn account or doesn't. And it looks like super professional or it doesn't. Same with the website, same with a Facebook page, same with a bunch of reviews that you like or a bunch of reviews that you don't like. So you just got to understand the Internet is either going to make a really warm introduction or really or they might even call. Right. You might just they may never call. They may go on the Internet. And go, Oh, my gosh, you're this. You know, this guy seems really angry. This is a terrible review that wasn't handled well online, uh, so I'm not even going to call them. No. Okay, so I've got some more, but any other questions on what I've said so far? Because that's kind of the foundation. Uh, no, sir. Um, can you address some issues about driving traffic to a website? Well, yeah, well, so we'll get there. Um, I just want to make sure we have the foundation. So I promise we'll get to traffic. Um, and again, I've done episodes specifically on that where we go deep, so I, I won't go deep, but I'll, I'll tell you when and where and how. Um, okay, so yeah. once you understand the total online presence that you're dealing with, it, gets, it can get a little overwhelming, right? Especially people trying to sell you stuff, right? You'll have uh, paid traffic guys calling you and saying, give me money and I'll, I'll get you a bunch of traffic, you know, pay-per-click fellas or the, or, or the yeah. traffic, right? Search engine optimization or 
even social media. Let me handle your social media and that will get you traffic to your website. And the problem is none of those are inherently good or bad, right? A lot of people want me just to give them the answer in terms of, oh yeah, social media is bad and paid, paid traffic is good, but it's, it's really not the case. The issue is it's a lot more complex. And uh, for those of you that have listened to the podcast for a while, you know, I'm constantly talking about, you need to know your audience and your niche and who your customer is. And guess what? Some of your customers are online all the time and all about social media and they're all over Twitter. Some of your customers are not. They don't even go online. They don't care. And they, they look at the yellow pages, right? So you got to make sure you, right. you ask better questions. Not you, but Cleaning Nation asks better questions instead of what is the right media source period for quote unquote the cleaning industry and start asking where, where do my people go to get information? And that's where you want to right. be. So if you're, and I can't answer this for you, uh, Randell or, or uh, Jermez, I can only encourage you to do the research, is find out where your audience, where your niche, where your perfect target customer gets their information, where they do their research. If they're not really online, right. you still have to have a website and, and be aware of your online presence, but you can kind of end it there. If they're Twitter nerds and they're constantly tweeting and that's how they register complaints and that, that's how they expect you to deal with them, then you dang well better be on Twitter. The big encouragement right. I want to give you and Cleaning Nation is so many people kind of are responsive in terms to, of what sales guy or how many sales guys has called and tried to pitch them on this, that, or the other. And then they just have this kind of Frankenstein of marketing right. things like, oh, well, we do like you'd asked about traffic. You know, some guy called SEO and said, we got to we got to be search engine optimized. So he's getting me a bunch of traffic. Well, is your is your is your target market online? And do they go to Facebook or wherever he's you know optimizing the traffic for? And do you have a website that's going to convert? Right. That's the first thing you've got to talk about is I would never, ever worry about conversion. or I'm sorry, I would never, never worry about traffic. Uh, and people, and that's the other thing we get into in other episodes is people call search engine optimization is free and then pay per click is paid, which is silly. They're both paid. Search engine optimization, right. you don't pay Google directly or Facebook directly for them to send you traffic, but you're going to have to write articles and have a website that's organized and do a lot of things that are going to cost time and or money, which is fine, right. but it makes no sense to do that investment if your website's not going to convert, right? If you've got a terrible website that people come to and go, meh, these guys look okay and then keep searching and never call or give you their email address or fill out a form or somehow continue the conversation. It would make no sense right. for you to send traffic to that website to not convert, right? That's just a waste. So first and foremost, you've got to get it. You've got to know what you want your visitor to do when you get to the website. And then you've got to track mm -hmm. if it's convert, if it's converting, once it's converting, now right. we can talk about paid traffic, whether it be search engine optimization or pay-per-click. Um, I know I'm going really fast, right. but yes, a good question. Uh, touch base with me. Are you what? What questions you have? What's what's working? What's not working? What makes sense? What doesn't? Um, right now, right now, it's just getting our conversion rate. You know, it's strong like we want to. Like you saying, uh, tracking down each other prospects and everything. Other than that, you know, it's okay. Okay. I mean, we have the social. This is right there. Uh, we have the the social media. We have uh, yellow pages. Um, I mean, we're doing everything. We just got to get you know more conversion. Okay. So if you need conversion, that really looks at your website in terms of what are we asking them to do, and then <clears throat> to really have an optimized site, you're going to want to do something called split testing, where you might have two headlines or two calls to action or um, you know, one says to call, one says to email, and you send traffic to each of those and you test which converts better, you know, is the button to do it green or blue? I mean, it's crazy stuff like that. That's how you really optimize a website and make sure you're converting as well. The one thing I want to uh, encourage you and Cleaning Nation on is what I don't want to see is people going, oh, I'm everywhere. I got Twitter. I got LinkedIn. I got Facebook, I got Mashable, I'm on wherever the wherever wherever there's social media, I'm on it. I'm on YouTube, I've got six podcasts, I'm what you know, I've got a blog, um, but they all suck, right? The blog, the last blog is, yeah. you know, six months ago and there's only three entries ever. And then the podcast, same thing. And then the, you know, the you know, Twitter, you're you've got the little, you know, egg and you haven't even put a picture up. And you know, I would rather see you have one or two 
really good social media outlets that you're you've got handled than right. six or seven that are done poorly because again they're gonna look and if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, you know, that might be like, oh, I'd like to see a LinkedIn profile, but they're not gonna just qualify you. If you have a crappy LinkedIn po profile, right. that might that's gonna make you look worse. Same with a website, right? If if you don't have a website, I mean that's a killer. But you can maybe right. overcome it. Having having a terrible website, that's that's almost impossible to overcome. So I really encourage you to find out where your customers are and don't be a jack of all trades. Do two or three things really well. Um, for janitorial, oftentimes reviews are huge. That's why I love the Sotellus guys. Obviously, you need a website. And then maybe pick one other thing. Um, you know, if you're residential, especially if you're moms, it might be Pinterest or Facebook or Instagram. If you're commercial, it's probably going to be something like LinkedIn. Um, that's why I talk about having a niche. If you try to serve everything to everybody, you have to be everywhere. And none of us have enough time or money to do that. So uh, kind of to sum up, find out where your audience is going and focus on those mediums. And I'd rather see you have fewer mediums that you're doing a good job with than a bunch of mediums that are all hanky and half set up. Fair enough? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We could talk for hours, but I want to make sure we don't have this be the uh, marathon podcast. Any other questions or thoughts or anything else you need before we move to the lightning round and give you the opportunity to get back to Cleaning Nation? Uh, no, sir. Not at the moment. All right, cool. I'll let you guys decide who is going to answer what, but here's the lightning round. Three quick questions. I have full confidence you guys are going to give three amazing answers. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received, personal or professional? Uh, the best uh, professional advice I've ever received, um, this came from a millionaire. He got his own business. And he was telling me, you know, don't let the, the work work you. You have to, you know, sometimes you got to fall back. Sometimes it gets to you and stresses you out. And it messes with your health. And then, you know, it comes, if it messes with your health, you can't really do nothing then because your health is gone. Man, that is excellent advice. I don't know who that friend of yours was, but I like him already. I tell my wife all the time, baby, I would rather be broke with you than rich uh, alone. <laughs> and that is so true. Uh, all right. What is the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that maybe we can learn from? Could you repeat that? Sure. What's the biggest mistake uh, you guys have made in the cleaning business so we can learn from your mistakes and hopefully save ourselves a headache? Uh, this is Randall. Um, I think the biggest, uh, I think the biggest mistake we've made was um, taking things a little too personal and accepting someone's word when you no, know, everybody's not going to keep it all the way straight, real with you. So, you know, the, we basically learned you can't take everybody for at, at their word. Man, that is such a bummer that that's the case, right? I wish I could tell you, you know, hey, Randell, you know, people are good and you should listen. And that was just one bad apple. But unfortunately, that's uh, that's the world we live in. So thanks thanks for sharing that, man. And, you know, it, it's kind of a bummer, but better better to, to double down on making sure you're dealing with the right people and getting it in writing. All right, last question. What's one idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice today that they can implement immediately that will improve their business or their lives? Don't think about everything too much. Just pick one thing, go ahead and do it, accomplish it, move on to the next. Man, that sounds like something I would say. I love that. Fantastic <laughs> advice and feedback. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your passion, hey, your transparency, you. your desire to grow. I appreciate you, Clean Nation. Appreciate you. If you want to check out Randell and Germez's show notes page and get everything you need to uh, grow your cleaning company, it's all at growmycleaningcompany.com. You can leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.